Good morning and welcome to worship. It seems late to be saying this but on behalf of Nicola and I I'd like to wish you all a happy new year. Um, yes it is 10 days in but it's the first opportunity we've had to greet you in this way so it still seems appropriate to me. Of course during this last year we faced many challenges and there are still some to come but what we know is that we serve and we worship a God who is with us throughout all circumstances and he's there to support us even when sometimes we don't see it like in the famous poem Put Footprints and that should give us cause to praise and so we commence this year by praising you have your song books returning to song number 55 praise my soul the king of heaven Now when we sing these words, they remind us just of how much we rely on him. Father like he tends and spares us, in his arms he gently bears us. And all these things can only happen when we give ourselves fully to him. When we are in a special relationship with him. And that's of course what we're going to be looking at in the next few weeks. We do so following on from what the territorial commander talked about last week and when he was talked about being in a covenant relationship. That's a challenge. Because if we're to be in a covenant relationship with God, it means opening our lives to him. It means allowing him to change us. It means allowing him access to our weakness, access to our weaknesses. It means allowing him opportunity to renew us. And these are all themes that we find in the words of our next song that we share together before we pray. Song number 601, the beautiful song, The Power of Your Love. Yeah. 
Shall we pray? Father God, we come to you at the start of a new year. A year that still holds so much uncertainty for us all. And we ask you, through the power of your Holy Spirit, to come close to each and every one of us. Help us also to stay close to you, even in the times of great doubt, so that as we move forward, we will be able to hear your voice and listen to your will for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're now going to listen to some words of scripture as Thomas shares with us the first eight verses of Exodus chapter 19. Exodus 19 verses 1 to 8. On the first day of the third month, after the Israelites left Egypt, on that very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out for Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. When Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, and what you are to tell to the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, we will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. Now, if you were watching last week, you'll have heard the territorial commander, as we said earlier, reflecting on the subject of covenants and inviting us all to do the same over these next two or three weeks. And that's what we intend to do. And so today we begin right at the very beginning to look at how, in the Old Testament, God intended his people to live in a covenant relationship with him. And as you can imagine from what I've just said, it's something we see right throughout the timeline of God's relationship with his people. So to pick out a couple of examples from the earliest pages of scripture, in Genesis chapter 9 we have the covenant that was made by God with Noah following the resting of the ark on Mount Ararat. And perhaps even more significantly is the covenant made with Abram, which was referred to by the TC last week. That comes in Genesis 12 and talks about the idea that God, through Abram and his descendants, will bring blessing to the entire world. For Abram, of course, becoming party to this covenant for him meant leaving his family and striking out on a new physical journey as well as an even more significant journey of faith. Well, I think what is clear when we look at the covenants that are to be found in the Old Testament is that there is one that overarches others and defines, defines really what a covenant relationship is. And it's that which is found in Exodus between God and the people of Israel led by Moses. And the covenant starts to be fleshed out in those words in chapter 19 that uh, Thomas shared with us a few moments ago. Where Thomas is called, where Moses, sorry, is called up to meet with God on Mount Sinai. And the conversation that follows shows what will become an essential in the relationship between God and his people. And that is, comes out in three key elements. Of course, it's based on the everlasting God, love of God for his people, a theme that will be common to all the covenants that we look at in the next few weeks. But there are three distinct elements here. So what are they? What are these themes? What are set out in these verses? And the first of these is that the covenant is God's idea. It's his initiative. Something that we see from those words in verse four, where God says to Moses, 
You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. It's all about what God has done for his people. It couldn't be any clearer, could it? He's reminding the Israelites through Moses how they came to be at this point in their journey. And it's really all down to him. Now, this is something that we can see in our own behaviour, I think. And something we've all said from time to time, not particularly about covenant relationship, but we've all played this card, haven't we? Well, I've done this for you and I've done that for you. And the thing is that when we say it, we're often saying it in a way that means that we want to exercise our superiority over someone else. But here in this context, God wants to remind them of the love that he has shown for them. A theme that will be returned to again and again throughout the pages of the Old Testament. But for our purposes today, this idea that God is reminding the Israelites of his love is something that is useful for us to understand because it helps us with the second of the three themes of, of this covenant. And that is the fact that it's all about the relationships. All covenants are about relationship. And here it's about a relationship between God and his people. And that's a relationship that has at its roots his love for them. And a relationship that allows the people to respond through obedience. That's something we first see in the words in, of God in verse 5, where he refers to to the people that Moses is leading as his treasured possession. Now surely that is a declaration of his love. But they can only remain in that precious, uh, very honoured state if they agree to be obey him. And so in verse 8, the people agree to do everything that the Lord has said. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that they recognise that he loves them and they want to respond in, in the same way. They want to do right by him. But there's still yet even more. Yes, that covenant has its relationship, has its roots in love, but there's something else. Something else that may be the ultimate force in establishing this relationship, this particular relationship and the idea that it's at its heart. And it's the idea that the people of Israel were special. The idea that they were chosen. Second half of verse 5 and into verse 6 tells, uh, tells us this, as God says to Moses that although the whole earth is mine, you will be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Now that really is being set apart from God, by God, isn't it? He could have the choice of the whole world, but he chose these few people. Perhaps they didn't see it at this point in time. Perhaps they didn't see how special they were. But if you think back, and if you think back through the history of the Jewish people, their whole history has been defined by this promised by this idea that they are chosen by God. But if, just for a second I also want to focus on those words that talk about a holy nation because this has particularly particular significance because they are words that are repeated in the New Testament. We find them in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 to be exact where Peter tells all who are part of the community of Christ that they too are a holy nation. And this is really important because in these words from 1 Peter and here in Exodus, it's, is that as a people, they are set apart. Whether that be the Israelites or whether that be the community of Christ, they are set apart as a holy nation. But set apart for what? Well, I think the truth is that they're set apart to give testimony to what is at the heart of all these relationship, relationships, something that we've already talked about, and that is the constant and everlasting love of God. 
and for the nation of Israel, just as it was their calling through their obedience and their covenant. So it is also our calling through our obedience and our covenant relationship with God, established through Jesus, which turned us into being part of this holy nation. And so as we progress in these next two or three weeks, I simply invite you to think about that as we move forward. To reflect on our own journey of how we've got where we are so far. As we think about that and how we might move forward, I'd like us to listen to a beautiful song from the discipleship section of our songbook. Song 682 talks of our calling talks of the fact that we have a mission but it also recognizes the fact that sometimes we're not always as keen on that mission as we once were and when that happens we need to ask the Lord to help us reclaim what once was lost and then we have a final plea in the chorus recognizing our own need for thy mission make me holy for thy glory make me thine, sanctify each moment fully, fill my life with love divine. Shall we pray? Father, our prayer today is that going forward, we will be committed to being in relationship with you. A relationship that will allow each of us to follow your will for our, our lives. Whatever circumstances we may find ourselves in, help us to discover what it is we can do for you. Being true to you and keeping you at the forefront of our minds. Help us to recognize your love and the fact that in return for that love, all you want is for our obedience. Let this be our reality. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for sharing with us this week and we look forward to sharing together next week as Major Nicola continues to look at this idea of covenant. We now conclude by sharing together song number 25, recognizing how wonderful the love of God is for each and every one of us. Thank you.
Kaut plaši vēl. Thank you.